In this video, we're going to talk about measures of variation. These are also can be called measures of dispersion. So a measure of variation tells us how varied or spread out the values in a data set are. Now these can only be used for quantitative data. They have no meaning for categorical or qualitative data. And the two that we use the most are the range and the standard deviation. Here are two histograms for different data sets, and we could compare the variation in these two data sets just by looking at the histogram. So for the data set on the right, that's for branch number two, you can see that the data values seem to be much closer together. If we look at the possible range for this, it would only go from three and a half as the minimum possible data value up to 7 for the maximum possible data value. Also, except for this bar in the middle, the rest of the data values seem to be at about the same frequency. So we've got more data bunched together in this one. In the graph on the left, the range would be much bigger because we're going all the way from 2 up to 10, and we have lots more different values that are more spread out. So this one would have more variation than this data set. Now to talk about the range of a variable, that's just the difference between the maximum data value and the minimum data value. So the range equals the maximum value minus the minimum value. The range is very sensitive to extreme values because it only uses the maximum and the minimum. And it only takes into account those two data values. It doesn't take into account the rest of the values in the data. So it's very easy to calculate, but because it's so sensitive to extreme values and it only takes into account two of the data values, it's not as useful as some other measures of variation. The round-off rule for measures of variation is the same as the round-off rules for measures of center that we talked about earlier. And this is that you round to one more place than what you have in the original data set. The standard deviation is a measure of variation of values about the mean. So the standard deviation has to do with the mean and how far the values are from that. There are two symbols for the standard deviation, depending on whether we're looking at data from an entire population or just from a sample. So if we were looking for data from a population, we call this one sigma. If it's just from a sample, then the standard deviation is s. One of the properties of the standard deviation is that it can't be negative. It's usually positive, but it can actually be zero. The value of the standard deviation can increase dramatically if we have outliers, which are data values that are far away from all the other values. And the units of the standard deviation are the same as the units of the original data values. Here are the two formulas for the standard deviation. One is if you have information from a population. The other is if you have information from a sample. The only difference between these two is that this one uses the number of values in the population, which is the capital letter N, in this one, you take the number of values in the sample, which is a lowercase n, and you actually have to subtract one from that. But in both of these, we're taking the data value x, subtracting the mean, so x bar stands for the mean, we're taking that result and squaring it, then the sigma tells us to add all those values together, and then we're dividing, in this one we're dividing by the number of values in the population, in this one by that value minus 1. So we're going to do a quick example of actually calculating the standard deviation. I won't ever ask you to do this by hand yourself, but I'm just going to go through this really quick so that you can get an idea of what the standard deviation actually gives us. So we've got five values and we're going to find the sample standard deviation for the values in this sample. 
Since it's a sample, we're using this formula with the n minus 1. And to do this, we need to know the value of the sample mean. So we would find the mean of our sample by adding the values together and then dividing by the number of values. So that value is 23.6. So what I'm going to do is take each data value, subtract the mean from that, and then I'm going to square that result. So it's easier to do this in a table form. And the thing to notice here is what happens for the value that's the furthest away from the mean. So if our mean was 23.6, then the data value that was the farthest away from it was the 18. So the absolute value for this difference was bigger than it was for any of the other ones. When we square that, it blows that value up even more. So this value ends up adding quite a bit onto the standard deviation. Because the next thing that we do is add up that column. That gives us 57.2. And then we're going to put the 57.2 on the top of our formula here. We divide that by the sample size minus 1, take the square root, and that gives us our standard deviation of 3.8. So again, if this value were closer to the mean, then we wouldn't get as much added on to our total here, and our standard deviation would be smaller. What the standard deviation ends up doing is that it gives us a kind of average of how far the data values are away from the mean. By adding these up and then dividing by the sample size and then taking the square root, that's what we end up with is an average in a, in a way. As I said, I won't ever ask you to find the standard deviation by hand. There's another video that shows you how to find the mean and the standard deviation and several other values using your TI-83 or 84. And we're also going to do this using other technologies such as StatCrunch. Another thing we're going to look at is comparing the standard deviation in different samples. So we can really only compare standard deviations for two different data sets if they use the same scale and the same units for the data, and if they have means that are approximately the same, because the standard deviation depends so much on what the mean of the data is. So if we have two samples that don't fit that criteria, then it's better to use the coefficient of variation. This describes the standard deviation relative to the mean. And here are two formulas for the coefficient of variation. Again, these are different depending on whether we have data from a sample or from a population. If it's from a sample, then our sample standard deviation is s, and our sample mean is x bar. If it's from a population, our standard deviation is sigma and our mean is mu. In either case, we're taking the standard deviation and dividing by the mean, and then we're multiplying that by 100%. So our values for our coefficient of variation turn out to be percentages. Here's an example of this. This is from the serial data file in StatCrunch. And these are some summary statistics for the carbohydrates and for the calories of the cereals. So for each one of these, we have a mean and a standard deviation. And because the carbohydrates are measured in different units than the calories, our values are very, very different. So the carbs have a mean of 14.8, while the calories have a mean of 106.8. So it really doesn't make sense to just compare the standard deviation straight up. That doesn't really tell us which one of these data sets has more variation. So instead of doing that, we would use the coefficient of variation. So for our carbo variable, our coefficient of variation would be 26.4%. For our calories variable, it would be 18.2%. What this tells us is that the calories actually have less variation relative to the mean than the carbohydrates do. Even though when we looked at our original summary statistics, the standard deviation for the calories was much larger than for the carbohydrates, but that was just because the units were different. 
One more measure of variation is called the variance, and this is just the square of the standard deviation. So the symbol for that for the population variance is sigma squared. For the sample variance, it's s squared. In each case, we're just taking the standard deviation and squaring it.